Hi there, this tutorial will show you how to add a scale bar and north arrow to your map. These layout tools can be instrumental in helping your map look and feel complete. I have already opened the USA48 AI file from the tutorial data folder. Once you have opened this file, you are ready to get started. On the map toolbar, I want to find the layout tools and select the scale bar button. When prompted, I am going to create a legend layer. In the scale bar dialog box, I am going to use the style drop down list to view my scale bar styles. There are many to choose from. As you can see here, there's a double bar. Just a bunch of different options. For the purposes of this tutorial, I am going to choose the default, which is also known as the single bar style but you can choose whichever one you like. In the Appearance tab, I can change the height of the bar, so I'm going to change mine to 8 points. Next, I'm going to click the hyperlink next to the Appearance. The Scale Bar Appearance dialog box allows me to customize my scale bar even further. So I'm going to change the alternate color to 20% black. And I'm going to change the stroke to 0.5 points. Click OK. Please note that even though I started with the single bar style, changing any of the settings will make it appear as a custom style in the scale bar style box. If you wish, you can click the save icon to save the custom scale bar as a new profile. This will make it available in other maps. Now I'm going to switch over to the intervals tab. And here I am going to choose kilometer in the units drop down list. In the interval box, I will type 250. And in the number of labeled intervals box, I'm going to type 4, but it's already there. Finally, I'm going to set the number of intervals to subdivide to 1. And I'm going to change the number of subintervals to 5. These settings will create a scale bar that represents a total distance of 1000 kilometers. It has four main intervals, each representing 250 kilometers, with the first interval further divided into five smaller intervals. Now I'm going to open the labels tab and I want to click the Tick Label Appearance hyperlink. This opens the Edit Text Appearance dialog box, and I'm going to click the Character Style Custom Style Toggle icon, and I'm going to keep it set at Normal Character Style. Click OK. Next, I'm going to click the Display Scale Value checkbox, and I want to make sure that Show Above is selected from the drop-down list and a line center from the other one. Next, I'm going to click the checkbox for display units to the right of the last interval label. Then I will click the display page to map units ratio checkbox. I'm going to choose centimeters from the page units for captions drop-down list. And I'm going to change the precision to zero decimals. And finally, choose Show Below from the Placement drop-down menu. So now that I have completed all these options, I can click OK to accept my settings for the scale bar dialog box. You can see that the scale bar is placed at the center of my page according to the defined settings. I'm just going to move mine over here. If necessary, I can resize the scale bar using the bounding box the scale will automatically adjust after it is resized. There you go, you can see that it has extended my scale bar. To change the scale bar size, I simply click the scale bar and select it and use the left or right anchor of the bounding box to resize it. And you can see that the scale bar automatically resizes and calculates the new values based on the current interval settings. Remember that if you wish to edit the scale bar after it is created, you can simply select the scale bar on your artboard and click the scale bar button on the map publisher toolbar again, like so. 
Also, if I wanted to rescale my map view, the scale bar would dynamically update each time I do that. The scale bar can also be expanded to be edited as regular Adobe Illustrator artwork. However, doing this breaks the link to the map view scale value. So if I did that, it would stop it from dynamically updating further when settings to my map are changed. With the scale bar created, we are ready to move on to creating a north arrow for our map. To get started, I'm going to open the map views panel. Here, I'm going to create a new map layer. I'm going to name this one North Arrow, and I'm going to set the feature type to Legend. Now I can close this, and I'm going to open my Symbols panel. Here I want to open the Panel Options menu, and go down to Open Symbol Library, find Map Symbols, Other Symbols, and North Arrows. I'm going to click and drag a north arrow symbol to my artboard. To make this symbol a north arrow, I simply select it and then click the north arrow button on the Map Publisher toolbar. So you can now see that the north arrow has changed from a regular symbol to a dynamic north arrow and is aligned in the north direction. I can also note that the north arrow created is now added to the symbols panel for my document, like so. North arrows can be created from any Adobe Illustrator symbol. Sample North Arrow designs are located in the Helpful Styles and Symbols folder that comes with all installations of Map Publisher. If I rotate the projection of my map, the North Arrow will adapt to this change and rotate itself to point towards north. To demonstrate this, I'm going to go back into my Map Views panel, and I'm going to double click the USA Map View. This opens the Map View Editor, here I'm going to set an angle of 45 degrees. I'm going to click the auto scale button and make sure that my quick alignment is at the center of the page. Click OK. And we can see here that the north arrow is now oriented according to the rotated map view. Any changes made to the coordinate system or angle of the map view will cause the north arrow to automatically orient itself towards true north. I'm once again going to return to the map view editor. And I'm going to give the north arrow a custom coordinate to point to. So to do this, I want to click the north arrow drop down menu and click configure. And then select custom coordinate. And I'm going to set it to 25 and 60, doesn't really matter here. Click OK. OK again. And you can see that my north arrow now points towards a custom direction independent of what true north actually is. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Thanks for watching.